Hello, I'm Pastor Daniel Fluke from St. Peter Lutheran Church in Green, and welcome to our third and final ecumenical midweek Advent service. Our music today is led by Pastor Joan Thomas, who serves the Green, Clarksville, and Shell Rock United Methodist and Brethren Yoke, as well as First Presbyterian Church of Green. And Pastor Kyle Barton of St. James Lutheran Church in Allison will be sharing an Advent reflection on patience with us today. So thank you for joining us for worship today and for this whole series. If you missed the first two, you can find those um, on the church Facebook pages or YouTube channels or websites. This is the last one of these services, but I hope you'll join one of our congregations for online Christmas Eve worship uh, next Thursday. Or this year, if you want, you have a unique opportunity to join all of our congregations if you want to. To begin the service, I invite you to join me in the call to worship. We wait, gracious God, not always with patience. We wait with expectation. Guide us to have patience. We wait for the birth of your Son and for the birth of our Savior. Let us pray. Holy patience, you are the deep, calm resistance against the riptide of the season's hurry. While swell upon swell of Christmas laps against every edge of our lives, you call us to an Advent way of living. Deep calling to deep, love bearing love, word becoming flesh. Slow, labored, beloved patience, come teach us to trust in Advent's buoyancy. Suspend us outstretched for the coming of Christ. We pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Tonight, we light the Advent candles of anticipation, hope, and patience. Let patience settle into your thoughts and into your life. Let it spread across your imagination as you look toward Christmas. Do not hurry. Wait. May we slow down, spread out our whole lives before God, and practice patient watching for the, where the light of God is falling. May we catch a glimpse of this holy light, of the lives and places in the world that need our attention and are illuminated by God's radiance so as to draw us near. May we all settle in Advent with a deep desire to set and attend to what matters to God. We join in singing together. Thank you. 
this evening comes from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is the Mighty One's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to God's descendants forever. Grace and peace to you in the name of the one who was, who is, and who is to come, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would first like to take a brief moment to offer my thanks to Pastor Joan and Pastor Daniel for their invitation to be with you this evening. I pray God's peace and comfort be with you all as we continue our Advent waiting in great anticipation. As we read through the Magnificat, or Mary's song, a few moments ago, two themes seem to immediately present themselves for consideration. First, and likely most forward in our minds, is the faith that Mary exhibits when she finds out she is expecting a child. Second, and coupled with the first, we may also begin to ponder the patience of Mary as she lived in anticipation of what was to come. I myself, have twice awaited the nativity of my own lineage, and I, with parents the world around, can attest to the patience, or <laughs> the lack thereof, faced as we waited with excitement, or angst, or pain, or uncertainty, or any combination of the prior coupled with other emotions. As parents are forced to be patient prior to the new arrival, some find themselves seeking out the advice of others in the world. Mary's visit to Elizabeth seems to be no different. Mary journeys to visit her kin, Elizabeth, who was also expecting a baby, that whom we know to be John the Baptist. This seems only appropriate for your younger mother-to-be to seek out someone wise to help guide and journey with her through the pregnancy. However, upon their meeting, something quite different occurs. The baby within Elizabeth's stomach leaps in joy and excitement while Elizabeth offers her praise of Mary and Mary's child-to-be. Very early, in Luke's gospel account, we begin to see within the encounter of Mary and Elizabeth how God works in the world. We see how God works in ways that are counterintuitive to popular thinking and assumptions. As Elizabeth's baby leaps with joy upon meeting Mary and her unborn child, she herself proclaims out loud, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. In that moment, Elizabeth becomes a prophet who speaks by the inspiration of God, the Holy Spirit, a happening that occurs in Luke's account with other persons. In her speaking, Elizabeth points to God's work and action in the world in the least of expected ways. Elizabeth speaks to the topsy-turvy use of a lowly young person to bring forth God of the Son incarnate for all the world. Mary responds to Elizabeth's proclamation with her song, 
As Mary begins, she gives thanks for everything that God has done for her. In her rejoicing and giving thanks, Mary offers herself as a sign of God's salvation, greatness, an attitude towards the people of the world who would typically not be thought of as important, strong, and mighty. As the song continues, Mary looks beyond herself out into the world, trusting in what God will do for all of God's people. Mary proclaims, God's mercy is for those who fear God. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. As Mary proclaims what we know to be true about God the Father's reign in the world through the Son, we are left waiting to be patient ourselves. Just as parents-to-be wait with patience amidst a wide range of emotions, we as God's children wait with patience for that time when God will come again. In our patience, we as Christians live amongst all the people of the world in our faith, a faith which tells us to advocate for those who society sees as less than and those who at times are forgotten about. In our patience through our faith, we advocate and work for justice and peace in the name of Christ, the one who is patient and advocates for all the people of the world. This fall, we have experienced Advent anticipation like never before in some of our lifetimes. As we journey through Advent, we are reminded of the light at the end of the tunnel we know as the COVID-19 pandemic. We have begun this very week to vaccinate our medical workers and we remain patient for other vaccines to be approved and manufactured soon. We will all be able to be vaccinated, which coupled with continued public health mitigation practices will bring us back to a life that resembles something like what we knew in February. We give thanks to God for the vocations of God's children who have brought us to this point to ensure that all God's people no longer are caused suffering, not only from direct infection, but from mourning that accompanies loss. Our Advent journey is about to come to a close as we will soon celebrate the nativity of our Lord come Christmas morn. As we patiently wait for Christ's inbreaking into the world, we are also forced to be patient in all aspects of our life as we continue to live with the reality of the current health crisis. In our patience, we trust that Christ is present with us through all of our life. In our patience, we trust that we have been, we are, and we will be strengthened for a life of service in the world as an expression of our faith and the love that is Christ through all of life's ups and downs. In our patience, we truly know the presence and the love that is Christ. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Holy Spirit fall upon you like a falling star trailing across the dawns and dusks of your Advent living. May the Spirit mark you with light and point the way toward God with us, Emmanuel. Be patient, draw close, for the Lord is very near. Amen.